Victor Orban has discovered something, but even he doesn't know quite what to call it. Is it illiberal democracy? Is it a return to the roots of Christian democracy, as he would like to say, or Christian liberty, as he's tried to coin that term? Will others follow him in Europe this year and in the coming years? What has he discovered, not only about staying in power, but about influencing the future debate, not only in Europe, but beyond Europe in the wider world, his emphasis on national sovereignty against the federal experiments of Europe. How will he be able to influence a Europe in which he's lost a major ally, Britain, that was acting as a kind of anchor on the federalist experiment? Will he be able to win more allies, both in Europe and beyond? He's lost a great ally in Donald Trump now with the recent American elections. Looking ahead to 2022, could he win another term in office or will the opposition, which has gradually and painfully realised in Hungary that it can only kick him out of power if it collaborates, will that collaboration, will that alliance work in the 2022 elections and could Viktor Orban, to his surprise and the dismay of all the people around him who've grown rich under his rule, be thrown onto the waste dump of Hungarian politics after so long in domination? Might an opposition, if it were to win in 2022, be able to govern in a country which Mr Orban has changed so much into his own image? Huge and exciting questions for the future, not only of Hungary, but of Europe. Nick, we've had the privilege of travelling with you in Budapest and also travelling down um, the south to the, the border with Serbia. Can you just give us an idea and also the, the flavour of what you can do on a trip with you in Hungary? There's so much to do in Hungary, so much happening here in the capital Budapest, but so much happening in the provincial towns where perhaps those political tensions are not so big and where, thanks to the opposition victories and the 2019 local elections, the opposition feel at last they have a foothold. Cities like Seged, uh, others uh, across the country where the opposition now run the local administration and they're allowing a sense that uh, they're not just permanent losers, where that they can uh, change perhaps local politics, can prove that they can work, that they can build relationships with Brussels and beyond without the interference of central government. But Hungary is much more than its politics. There's the culture, the countryside, the beekeepers of this country, the uh, agricultural producers, the cities, the culture of theatres going back to the 19th century and before. There's an enormous amount to see in this country and a lot of surpri surprising contrasts between the capital and the countryside. And now needless to say you're sitting in the suburbs of the leafy suburbs of Buda and it's the middle of winter but it's a lot hotter in, in Hungary's summer isn't it? It's uh, a lot. I'm pretty warmly dressed here. It's two degrees as I record this message to you. But uh, Hungary is a uh, Mediterranean climate, largely surrounded on three sides by the Carpathian Mountains. This is the Carpathian Basin. The weather tends to stay here in spells of seven or, or ten days at a time. So when the sun does shine here, which it normally does, the weather does stay warm for a, a long time. So bring your sunglasses. <laughs>